Good afternoon, amigos, from the Valle de Guadalupe. Now, today we have partnered with, with Valle Wine Live to explore some of the best wineries in the area. How beautiful this area is. Oh my gosh. It is so peaceful here. The the wine, or the, the grapes rather, the vines, the hills, this amazing weather. Uh, the goats in the back. Before we head into our first uh, winery, I just, I wanted to express my gratitude, I guess. I don't know, for being able to live in this amazing country with this great weather, with uh, a wine, two wine regions here, and then also in Querétaro. Uh, an amazing culture, just a place full of surprises, full of uh, amazing things that it truly does not get enough credit for. Now, for wine. Is it too early for wine? It's never too early for wine. <laughs> We are in the wine, winery. This is not relief for all of the gringos out there. This is Relieve, right? Relieve. He says a little bit more crisp <laughs> than I can. Uh, we are here with uh, Winces. Winces, fun fact about Winces is Winces is very tall. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, almost two meters, right? I'm 6'3". Three. 6'3", three. He's, he's on up there. He was a former basketball player at uh, Tech de Monterrey, and now him and his family runs this beautiful winery. Uh, we'll give you plenty of shots around here, but we are starting off with a nice Chardonnay. Definitely green apple, definitely pear. Un gatito. First sip doesn't count. <laughs> That's good. It's sweet, but not too sweet. I don't know any wine terminology. It's refreshing. Refreshing, that's what it is. I could drink a bottle or two of that every night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now before we taste too much wine and, and, <laughs> and lose any more uh, brain cells along, <laughs> along this uh, adventure, the uh, Valle de Guadalupe, this area, this region of Baja, accounts for 90% of, of all of the Mexican wine in Mexico, that's a little redundant, is, is made here in the Valle de Guadalupe. And I guess probably the other 10% and maybe in the Querétaro area if there's any other wineries uh, in Mexico. And then within that 90%, uh, all 85% uh, of that 90% is made from one company. What's the largest wine com producer company? Uh, Cheto, LA Cheto. El Cheto. Mm -hmm. They produce they produce the largest quantity yeah. uh, barrels or yeah. Uh, they produce over a million cases a, a year. million cases a year and That's then the, the rest uh, the majority of the other wineries or vineyards are oh, more uh, boutique style kind of like relief I don't know I won't keep wanting to say relief it's throwing me off that it looks exactly the same are uh, smaller smaller operations compared to uh, you know compared to a huge organization that you might see in in Costco or Sam's. Additionally, wine has been grown in this area for since I believe the 17th century, uh, primarily first starting with religious purposes, mm -hmm. uh, but the wine region in terms of tourism and, and boutique uh, vineyards really didn't start until the 1980s, 1990s is when it yeah. uh, really kind of blew up first and is still growing and growing. And David, uh, who is our guide with us today, told us just in the last five years, he's seen it growing and growing. Uh, so I think it's, it's again, like I said, starting off the video, so many things in Mexico really get overlooked. And I think the wine in particular gets mm -hmm. overlooked. You know, you hear about Napa, Napa Valley, you might hear see or hear yeah. from wines of Chile and uh, Argentina, or like if you go to some store in the States, they'll have French wine, but you don't really see 
Mexico just doesn't get the respect it deserves, but hopefully today uh, in this video with a little bit of uh, tasting, a little bit of liquid courage, <laughs> liquid courage we can help change that. important to note, I've mentioned that I feel like Mexico and more, more specifically Mexican wine gets overlooked on the international stage big time. A lot of people have never even heard of, mm -hmm. of Mexican wine. Or don't even know that. Yeah, don't know that Mexico has a wine region. But I think part of that uh, is to blame for Mexico in, in and of itself. I read online, Mexico ranks 66th in the world in terms of wine consumption. So wine for Mexicans, and I'm not Mexican, so we'll let our amigo speak, is it's not culturally hasn't been very popular as a drink for that long, has it? No, if you go in terms of consumption, uh, our consumption here in Mexico is one liter per person a year. Uh -huh. A year? If, if you... And uh, how big is this bottle? That's a liter and a half? That's 700. 750. Uh -huh. So, but that amount increased in the past five years, uh -huh. uh, very important. Okay. Like, a big increase in uh -huh. the past five years. Interesting. We yeah. used to have half of that. Really? Uh, five or seven years wow. ago. We're gonna drink more than that today. So oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you compare that to uh, France, European yeah. country, they are in the range of the 30 liters per Ooh. person. Wow. Which is more like you. Which is, <laughs> you guys are gonna drink this. Yeah. Uh, uh, and how do you think? And I think part of the reason, and again, I'll let you speak for this, is because like obviously beer is so popular in Mexico, tequila is so popular, mezcal, uh, and then also I think like, I mean, it, almost in a different category, but like agua frescas and sodas are so popular in Mexico. Like I mean, if you go to a taco stand, people are either drinking Coke. Uh, agua fresca or beer. or beer, you know, it's like so many people are not used to drinking wine. I don't think with Mexican food is that changing as well. Or? Yeah, that is changing. Uh, and one of our goals as wine producers is to try and change our culture of how you drink wine. I see. Because a lot of people believe that wine is made for, uh -huh. you have to know about wine uh, if you want to, yeah, it's uh -huh. more exclusive, uh -huh. it's high-end, but that's totally wrong. Right. Wine is an everyday drink uh -huh. that we're confusing, or we're, exactly. we're totally missing the concept of uh -huh. It's not only wine. for fresas. <laughs> we make wine to be uh, paired with Mexican food, uh -huh. okay. and with, paired with tacos, paired uh -huh. with uh, ceviches, paired with all this amazing yeah. food that we have here in our country, uh, wine could be easily paired with any of them. What wine do you have that pairs best with uh, Tacos de Pastor? <laughs> or we're, we're in Baja. Probably the Rosé. The Rosé that rose 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 you guys tried, the Pinot Noir and Malbec. Uh -huh. Probably would go really well with Tacos de Pastor. There you go. If you're going to get some Tacos de Pastor, maybe at uh, Las Huertas in, in Vallarta, yeah. pick up a Rosé here. <laughs> It smells bold. This is so beautiful. We are right in the middle of the vineyard uh, and to our left here we have the Neviolo that I could easily spot because of the, the leaves. I mean, that's classic Neviolo Italian grape. Just knew that by looking at it. It's so pretty here. It's amazing. They do weddings here, events. Uh, 
space is beautiful. So they had a wedding not long ago with 400 people in Una Banda Sinaloense. I imagine that was, uh, yeah. Wait, why were we invited? I feel like yeah. that had to have been a party. Y'all, you can go with him. I'm fine to walk by myself. Yeah. Yes, if I wanted to drive the John Deere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to drive the John Deere. <laughs> yes, are you not getting in? No, I'll just walk. You don't want to hold the machete? No, I'm good. No, 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 no. I'll walk. I don't trust him. Never driven to Mexico before. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Got good cheese, got some meats, some breads, good views, an amazing wife. Aww. What did I do in life to deserve all this? <laughs> but for real, <laughs> what did I do? What did I, I do? Deserve these nostrils that flare when I laugh. What did I do in life to deserve those? <laughs> Don't zoom in on me. <laughs> Second winery of the day. We're in uh, Santo Tomas, which our amazing host David has told us is the oldest winery yep. in the region. It's uh, 1888. Como mis <laughs> <laughs> and we are with our amigo Samuel. Samuel. Okay, and Samuel is going to tell us all about these amazing wines. How many different? Look at that selection. How many different wines? Oh, we actually manage 43 different labels right now. I mean, right now we don't have all, all of them. Uh, Santo Tomas is a company uh, tries to commercialize 43 different labels. They're actually on the Mexican market. Some of them are in the United States, okay. but uh, we're still going through it. We're going to taste at least 30, right? <laughs> well, yeah, we're going to try. Gonna try. <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> that was like candy. Oh, really? Sweeter? Yeah. This was like candy. Uh, Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> this one is a uh, rosé, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna start. We're gonna start giving our tastings. We're done saying bold, intense, sweet, not sweet. We're gonna start comparing it to different versions of Mexican foods that we can. This one? Melted paleta. Melted, it really is, all the way. <laughs> or like agua fresca. Agua oh, fresca. Yeah. yeah it's, it's got a sweet, light, desserty. Also, watermelon Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of looks like that. Agua I think I'm being painted. Yeah. <laughs> It 
smells like butter, which he actually said was correct. From the French barrels, all right. A ver, una. Doesn't count. Doesn't, if it did. Doesn't count. This wine's named after my mom, Barbera. <laughs> Barbara. Not barbaric. Careful. It's close. <laughs> How would you describe that? <laughs> like a pencil. <laughs> what was the word they used? Wood. What's the What's the word that starts with the T? Not acidic, but. You said that your favorite kind of wine is. No, it's it's the it's like the taste. Tannic. tannic. Very tannic. I don't know if that's right or not, but it tastes like. How, chip. how, in terms of Mexican food, what would you compare this to? Not pairs well with, but compare it to a Mexican food. <laughs> Ooh, um, <laughs> <I don't>, mole. <laughs> <laughs> mole, all right. Got a lot going on. All right, what do you think, our Mexican expert? Not, not pairs Does well it, with, but no, 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 it smells and tastes like. It, it, it actually not pairs with mole, but. No, it doesn't yeah. pair with no, mole. Does it like taste, if you were to compare it to a Mexican food? This is mole. It's gotta be mole. It's gotta be mole, okay. Yeah. It's got so many ingredients going on. <laughs> had eight wines so far. Huh? Which one's your favorite? The last one. Yeah. The last one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. The one with chocolate is the one that's standing out and that's got brandy in it. Uh -huh. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. That one was really good. It was really sweet. Also very bold. Greg said he couldn't drink a lot of that. I liked that one and I liked the rosé. I'm pretty sure influencers say things like rosé all day, so that's me, <laughs> rosé all day. <laughs> So very fancy. It is. <laughs> it's the it's the elevated wines. I think is the respectful way to talk about wines that are of an elevated, highest stature, social class <laughs> as far as wines and the experience is top notch. It's also elevated. Uh, I think this this area, the Valle de Guadalupe, and uh, it's just so interesting being I don't know 60 miles south of Tijuana, 80 miles south of Tijuana, and and with Tijuana and unfortunately Mexico as a whole uh, in the United States and sometimes even nationally within Mexico having not so good of a reputation. And and I unfortunately when people think of Mexico, a lot of times they don't think of things like this. I mean, we live in a country that has multiple wine regions where you get to have yep. these fancy, you feel like you're like in Europe or something or things that are romanticized. Uh, about you think of France or Italy or Spain or Portugal or maybe Argentina or Mexico. Uh, amigos, this is Mexico. We need to change the way we think about Mexico. We live in a country where people speak multiple languages. It's not there's not just Spanish. <laughs> Obviously, there's English being spoken. There's uh, multiple indigenous languages, multiple cultures. Uh, we have many UNESCO World Heritage Sites. We yeah. have some of the finest cuisine in the entire world. We have some history. of the best architecture, history, waterfalls, natural beauty, all within Mexico. While I think all, the, all of those things individually are romanticized throughout the entire world, but forgotten about here in Mexico. And today I've just been reminded of how 
how shameful that is and how yeah. that needs to change and hopefully through today's wine experience we can we can help change that a little bit but uh enough talking more drinking <laughs> have a nice sauvignon blanc parlez francais a nice <laughs> please try i didn't know how to speak french uh in today's video but we have a sauvignon blanc with a nice cheese tray everything pairs well with cheese everything pairs well with cheese <laughs> Rosado 2015. Interestingly enough, he told us rose just is typically not doesn't last very long, it's like it doesn't age very well. But he said this one has aging well, like my suegra. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to save grace, save face. Don't count. Not as sweet as some of the other roses. I'm gonna go fresas con crema. Fresas con crema. Sweet, but not too sweet. It's not the fresas con crema especial that we had in Mazatlan. It's just like your typical fresas con crema. A little sweet, but not too sweet. And I would just wanna say fresa because, well, fresa. <laughs> different wine tastings all so different all so different 12 total 12 total they're sort of different all wine. blending together if you will did you have a favorite today was an absolute blast i don't know i don't know i feel I, like the last one the last <laughs> it was like the six the seven of course, the 12. of course the more we drank the better they got yeah. uh amigos we have uh so many thanks to give you for voting on baja uh, in, in Tijuana and this whole area yeah. is being our June Adventure of the Month. If you'd like to vote in our July Adventure Month that is open to all of our Lime patrons and all of our YouTube community members. Links yeah. down below. Uh, we will <laughs> try and top this. I don't know really how we're difficult. gonna top Baja. Uh, and also a special thank you to Valle Wine Tours and uh, David of course for, for providing this tour and making it happen. It has been really um, unique and yeah. I think one of the things that sets David's tours apart at Valle Wine Life is that you can sort of customize, if you are yep. a wine expert and you only want to go to sort of the elevated wineries where mm -hmm. they sell or produce the um, higher end wines, if you yeah. will, then David can help create that experience yep. for you. If you're more like Greg and I and you just sort of want an introductory, maybe from um, the less elegant, more informal up until the, the very most formal, I feel like that's one of the cool things is that there is a wine and there is a winery and there is um, a special day that yeah. David at that Via Wine Life can help create for the entire yeah. spectrum. He can really craft Whether your palate's refined <laughs> or not. <laughs> He can really craft your perfect experience here in Ensenada. And uh, well, amigos, we've had a blast. I feel way too fancy, way too fresa. I think it's time for some street tacos off camera. Yeah. Sorry you'll have to miss that. Uh, until the next time. Have less, do more, wine more. <laughs> wine more. <laughs> mm -hmm.